Hi, uh, this is Vidya from the Coe Post. We have with us today Ms. Uh, Swati Rohit, who is the founder of SeekSia.com, and uh, Mr. Gurumurthy, the historian, who is going to talk today about uh, you know how important culture and heritage is, and has it really ingrained in the uh, minds of the youth? What have we been doing so far uh, to get the heritage, rich heritage rather, of our country to the youngsters of today? Uh, so, Mr. Gurumurthy, uh, please tell us. Why uh, this uh, heritage lecture was significant? Why did you uh, embark on this idea? And uh, why did you tie up with uh, CXIA? Basically, Rotary Club of Coimbatore Metropolis, which we belong to, is one club, apart from our regular community services activities, whatever we're doing, we pay a lot of importance to the Indian heritage and culture. We feel that we have a role and a responsibility to preserve it and take it for the future generation. In this uh, line, we started this Natyanjali Dance Festival at uh, Peru, which is going for the past 22 years successfully there. And uh, four years back, uh, we just wanted to take this great heritage of our country to the youngsters, for them to better know about this culture and heritage and the great temples and their contributions and things like that. And we organized a seminar for two days on the great heritage of Cholas. It was a fantastic success. That particular um, videos, whatever we had uploaded it on YouTube, is still being looked, out, uh, being looked by many people, researchers and people living abroad to know more about this. So this year we wanted to do again a, a lecture series, but not only Cholas, but uh, since we have done Cholas, we wanted to do the other part of the four kingdoms which ruled this part of the South India for almost 300 years. And uh, that is before Cholas had come into power. So we were contemplating on doing this and we ended up in this topic of uh, the great heritage of Pallavas, Pandyas, Chalukyas and Rashtrakutas. So this particular project involves a lot of money, a lot of uh, work and uh, to get the people to this particular thing. So we were looking for right sponsors and then we ended up with <laughs> Sikhsi and Swati Rohit for uh, this. She readily agreed and came forward and uh, she said she will be really interested in to join hands with us and do it and that's how we have come into this. Okay, uh, so Ms. Swati, uh, please tell me why do you why did you think this was important in the current scenario? So six years started as a portal that mainly stood for the youth. It came, it started and evolved from an idea. We were traveling in Italy uh, with my ten year old child, and he was talking about and asking us about the different heritage sites in India. And uh, so when we came back and looked at the different websites available for say not just children but even young adults to say anyone in there you know uh, from 30 to 50 um, all the sites were very oriented to people who already understood heritage who already had some background and knowledge about it but when you came to somebody who wanted to just start or at least begin to understand our heritage there's very little out there that actually clearly explains it so this was the reason for starting Sikhsia just as a website that um, gives information to the younger generation and helps them study their heritage or even understand their heritage because what is heritage after all it's your history my history right right so, uh, so do you think our current education system is given uh, giving enough importance to heritage history culture if I had to answer that truth is no we're learning a lot more about Western heritage and even the history in our textbooks a lot of it has been dictated by a very Western perspective and what we here at Sikhs here aim to do and through lecture series is like the heritage series and is to shed light on what's important in our heritage and culture. What do we look at? So very simply, I always say, you know, if you had a complicated machine and then you had a manual for it and you just kept it in the package, didn't open it, didn't look at the manual. So what use is that machine to anybody, to you, me? So, yeah, so you have to take it out, use it, read the, it's complicated. Heritage is not something simple. You look and you're like, oh, wow, it just hits you in the face. It doesn't. And we have to learn from our past to really evolve 
and to understand okay. today's current identity crisis for example so if heritage needs to be ingrained in the young minds where do we start hence we start with first attending these lecture series so no no i'd have to say that but generally speaking we'd have to start with questioning our grandparents actually sitting down spending some time with them and understanding what it is they understood from the previous generation how do we really learn at the end of the day you know i mean we have to learn from our mistakes be it positives be it negatives whatever it is so understand where you came from what you are and that really helps you understand your heritage and uh, what better way than to come and start with subject matter experts and learn it the right way not listen to hear say of course we learn a lot of good things from people but at the end of the day uh, there's a lot of value to coming and listening towards people who are experts yeah. okay this is another this is a big reason why we're here today so okay. it'll be really interesting to hear mr gurumurthy's perspective on heritage and how to get it across yeah. so coming to our indian heritage basically all our indian culture and heritage lies in the temples that we have spread across the length and breadth of this country now what happens is that when you go into a particular temple all that we go all these children everybody when we go as a family or anybody who goes into the temple just goes there directly walks through the temple goes to the sanctum prays to the god and uh, does all that towards our archana puja giving all the list of names and he comes out and he hardly finds some time to go around the temple or look at the beauty of the temple or anything he just walks away now there are these days now you find on the holidays plenty of tours being organized say they say we are visiting 45 temples in two days they'll go this is the same thing exercise they do it and come back but why should I mean if you take just another extra 15 minutes just going to the temple first see what is that temple what does it appeal to you what is something that you are able to look at this temple what is the greatness of this temple what do you find something different from other places how are you able to relate to this particular temple and then if you start looking at that perspective what happens naturally your eyes and ears are open so many information comes into you and then you start loving it you just go there as a what you call um a remote control uh, machine go pray and come back it doesn't serve purpose you start looking at it in a different perspective and just look for it something it gives you so much it gives you so much for you to take it. Yeah. so uh, going by uh, the rich heritage the you know uh, exquisite architecture uh, which our temples have do you think the hrnc department has to do a lot more in terms of you know uh, engaging guides uh, such that okay you were talking about uh, children wanting i mean getting to know uh, or rather questioning the parents the parents should be in a position to answer so are we doing less on those lines absolutely correct what you say is 100% correct see this is always a clash between hrnc department the asi and so many things this is a leave apart from that and let's not get into the controversy of it how they are maintaining and things like that there are so much of things to be spoken about that no it's not no, a question no, no, of no, I'm just, uh, it's a question of creating awareness they yeah they come they that's what coming to the large role yeah they do they do play a large role see that's what and i was they have the knowledge base also yeah that's what i was saying if you go into tanjavur area every small village which is a tiny village of uh, say let's say about 20 to 30 houses this this got a temple which is running almost about 2 1 and 1/2 acres 2 acres very exquisite and when you walk into that particular temple and see most of the temples are closed because they hardly open for a, a day's puja at some time the day and the rest of the time it's closed and the key will be available to somebody you can just go through that but if most of the people who come like that to see the temple they are not aware to know what it is if we are able to just give the gist of what is the greatness of to the temple to that two three youths who are there even a girl child or anybody they could explain it so beautifully let it be in tamil local language it need not be even english even if it's a local language 
people try to understand that more and they will also enjoy and they will recommend so many uh, so many others to come there yes. and thereby you are promoting your temple you are providing an employment to a girl from that particular area and so many things can happen there are so many things can happen i don't know why we are not looking at that particular line yes. see thinking of uh, a heritage temple it doesn't mean only the tanjavur big temple or the ganga konda cholapuram or darasur hundreds and hundreds of such temples are there exquisite beauty there must be somebody to explain them right right and uh, this question is to uh, ms pati uh, you know you have this history of temples that were earlier published in books in small booklet uh, kind do, do we even see that nowadays we don't actually there is not even a board up in the temples explaining Absolutely. you know uh, or explaining anything about the heritage let Absolutely. alone the history nothing there's you go there and as he said it's a mechanical process so people should uh, there is some av uh, information available online but you're going to have to look hard if you have to find authentic information and uh, and how do you decide <coughs> what's authentic and what's not right. Right. the amar chitra kathas did a much better job than anybody else to you know right uh, right right and so um, mr gurumurthy um, also tell me um, see there seems to be a, a major uh, uh, hours uh, or aversion to sanskrit as a language and heritage is something that we closely associate with uh, sanskrit uh, it is more synonymous uh, with the language so uh, you know because uh, the parties in tamil nadu are kind of politicizing over languages where do we see heritage going so let me tell you very clearly <coughs> sanskrit is the oldest language in this country yes. that doesn't mean tamil the dravidian language tamil is inferior to it this is also a very equally a very old and renowned language right. now both were coexisting i don't know why there should be a difference saying one is higher one is lower it's all came through in the recent times i would say sanskrit and tamil coexisted very well even in the king's time all the inscriptions that they has made in the temples the first verse of that inscription will be in sanskrit and the second verse will follow within the local language of tamil therefore i'll tell you a classic example kumbakonam nageshwara swami temple on the basement of the temple adrishtana of the temple there is a complete ramayana sculpture in small panels of 6 inches by 6 inches this ramayana sculptures were sculpted by this person who did it at about 1400 years 1500 years back whereas kambar wrote the ramayana in tamil much later at least 400 years later than that period if the ramayana to come in the visual format as what we see there the person who sculpted it was an expert in sanskrit language he has learned valmiki ramayana and he has seen that valmiki ramayana in his own eyes and given the three dimensional effort for it so it is uh, you're saying that it is high time that we stop politicizing our languages absolutely absolutely correct we should not politicize all these languages we have to coexist everything has to coexist everything has got a greatness by itself and there is enough and more scope for everything to coexist in this world and let us not keep our narrow minded view into this so could you tell us how interesting the series is going to be what are the topics that are going to be discussed we are going to discuss about 13 different topics and all these topics are very interesting like uh, i would say what dr naswam is going to talk is about um, the great temple of kailashnatha at kanchipuram we call it as a great temple because that was the temple which really inspired rajarajan to bring built this beautiful uh, temple at bradishura at tanjavur okay. not only that this was the first ever structural temple was so magnificently built and this entire built uh, temple was built in sandstone plastered with lime mortar and painted beautifully now what happened at after this temple was such a beautiful one it was such a beautiful one painted and it was glowing the art enemies of the pallavas 
Chalukyas, when they want, they had invaded this Pallava territory, they wanted to destroy the entire Kanchipuram. And the first target was to destroy this Kanchipuram Kailashnatha temple. Vikramaditya, when he came and saw this beauty of the temple, he was dumbstruck. He was amazed by the beauty and the grace of this temple. He made an inscription that any person trying to do any small destruction to this temple will be met with capital punishment. Not only that, his two queens took those two architects of that particular temple along with her to her place Patanakal and they built a beautiful temple for Kailashnatha there. Now it's called Virupaksha and Malikarjuna temple which is still existing in Patanakal. Oh, okay. That's something great about that Kailashnatha. How many people know about it? This Kailashnatha temple is spread with so much of sculptures. So many sculptures. You cannot count it. So beautiful. So many sculptures of Shiva is seen all over. Not only Shiva, many other gods also. See, for example, that is one great. Then talking about the Elora, Elora is everybody's uh, guess. You know, the Kailashnatha temple of Elora was such a beautiful temple which was just carved out of from a live rock. From the top, X, Y, A, B axis, all the four axis, it had to be worked. It had to be worked from the top and it was brought down entirely from a single living rock and that was a marvel that was created by Krishna 3 of the Rashtrakutas and this again the Kailashnatha temple uh, which was built by the two queens Lokama Devi and Trilokama Devi in Patadakal is an amazing example of the Chalukyan architecture with a lot of influence from what you see in Kanchipuram. In general I would say this is going to be one of the most beautiful and wonderful lecture series that you're going to and you have to be there to enjoy it. Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you.